I just need to talk to you about what I'm seeing. I'm going to ask you to center me on top of point by your spirit. If I look out there, if I, if I look into the lives of the average American, I'm going to speak about America right now because that's, that's the place I can see. That's, that's where I'm at. I see a human race that is minded toward pursuit. The American dream, right? But I see it. How so? I see it in, in, in what people, when they wake up in the morning, what are they minded on first? Is it their to-do list? Is it is it going to work? Is it making money? Is it what entertainment things they like to watch or partake in? Is it the people they idolize or need to be in contact with or around or partaking in? Pursuit. They are in pers hot pursuit. Of everything except your, you and your holiness. Everything except repentance unto the infractions against your holy way. From the very one that made us. From the very source we come from. Well, how have we fallen so far to remember who, who, who you are and who we are? How has the flesh far surpassed corruption in the soul, but has penetrated the spiritual realm? Carnality has penetrated your spiritual realm. How so? You ask me again? Well, sir, what are they partaking in? Because behind every partaking or every pursuit is the spirit that drives that pursuit. So, the outward appearance of what happens in our government, in our entertainment circles, in our churches that are in the world, in our jobs where people pursue their money and incomes, all is in arenas that speak not first of you, your way, or provision from you, yourself, in whatever manner you so choose to provide for each and every individual life because you are their God leading them individually. I see this. This group spirit. You have group spirits. I don't know which ones they are, sir. I don't really get into. Are these the principalities or just the high wicked powers that are up and out there? To me, it doesn't matter. They're all fallen and they're all fathered from Satan. From the prideful victimhood, murderous, lying spirit to begin with. They're all fathered of him, so I really don't care about his underlings and their names. Because you already said you surpass all of them. You are over them, above them, rule over them, and they are all subject to you. And so I don't really care. But I see group mentality spirits that are going on. I see people that are... Hmm, how do I... Okay, I see people that are seeking, again, your kingdom assets. But not seeking you. How so? Well, if they were seeking you, they would seek your way. If they were seeking you and your way, they would live their lives a certain way. So when I see people live their lives, whatever way they're living their lives, 
it becomes evident who their God is because their God leads them in all things. So what they wake up and do, what they think upon first, what they find themselves gravitating to with their hand to the touch of a button without even really thinking about it, tells you who's leading them from inside. And when our representation in the world, which is all leadership, not just politics, when our leadership in all arenas in the world, we're talking police, firemen, teachers, parents, husbands, wives, church leadership, border patrols, armies. All of these groups and systems in the earth are led by a leader, every single one of them. And in that leader is a spirit or spirits that rule them and guide them in the conduct becoming of whatever that spirit is. So when you start to see the leaders and the high up people in positions in this world have taken a dip towards the evil, you know that the principalities and the high powers that work in spiritual realms, realms far above what man can understand have already penetrated. They've already found themselves seeped into these systems, twisting them and perverting them onto their own means of manipulative gains. What does that mean? Whatever they want it pointed towards. Whatever is not pointed just towards Jesus and his way and Father God and their Holy Spirit and furthering the good news in the earth, anything other than that has an agenda and a manipulative spirit behind it. You have me writing right now a post. I don't know when we're going to get it out because, honestly, Jesus, I'm sure it's for everyone. But right now, I went full on with you on if anybody preaches a different Jesus. Because I am, you could say, livid inside with righteous indignation over the fact that the more you have been bringing me into... Um, fine refinement, ultra refinement, wherever there are any doors open to the devil and his influence in your life and corruption, everyone in anyone's lives, they will, it will be exposed now because I'm going to uh, pull the rug up, pull the veil, lift the veil, show everybody what's behind the curtain in every individual life. And it will take, it will take effect collectively throughout the whole entire nation. That is what you have told me, right? So bubbling up in me lately from the spirit is righteous indignation over absolute disrespect to the Holy Spirit, which is, which is, which is blas blasphemy. It's, it's, a, it's unpardonable for one to have been provided perfection and the spirit thereof that brings you into all truth and conforms you to his image is actually being walked on in churches, Christian churches, and every other false religion world churches. They are leading your children down paths of pursuit. Okay, if we're doing anything other than pursuing you, sir, we are we are on a, a distracted mission from the devil. He has successfully distracted us from the great company mission or the great company co-mission which is to seek and to save those which are lost with the Spirit of God, living himself right out of our lives because we are surrendered, consecrated, sanctified, and living unto the Holy God in truth, purity of heart. But by far and large, I'm seeing pursuit, 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 the American pursuit. There's nothing in the Bible that talks about Blessing nations that are just in pursuit of things. You see, you blessed Judah and Israel. Mind you, God, I don't think people realize you didn't bless any other people. By far and large, regularly, you did not. There probably were occasional different tribes and, you know, like the Samaritans, the Good Samaritans, but not like the whole country. You only blessed your people and therein lies the thing that I've been talking to you about. Many think they're yours and they are not. 
even prophets. Many think they are speaking, thus says the Lord, from the Lord. And they are speaking, thus says my soul, from my soul. And you can hear the choking up of me and then I know the weight of that. I know. I have holy reverence when I come before you every single time. To bow humbly and only speak that which we have seen and heard from God. And you do know most of that takes place in script scripture. Sir, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing such a disrespect for your holiness and for your word. So, I think a lot of righteous indignation is from a deep pain within that even the Father himself can recognize of the Son for all that he came and accomplished is being walked on and spit on him. We complain more about burning the American flag than we do what they're doing to you. What they made of your sacrifice. I did not intend to go here. Lord. This started because I'm watching. Right, I'm watching. And there's a football game on. I walk by others headed on and I'm not talking. I'm not talking about any specific individuals. As you have noted, I've not said a name. But what I recognized is I can't do that. I can't do that anymore. I cannot sit and operate like your average American God. I want to throw up physically and spiritually. Because this is what I see. Just This is the way you help me when I just sit down to watch for a minute to heat my back with a heating pad. I sat down to disengage from what we had been writing just to find myself smack dab in it <laughs> just to sit down and eat my bag i see football and when i see it i see idols and stars and greatest of all time and pride and exaltation of human beings and i weep because they're going to die those people the sports players are going to die musicians and entertainment world people are going to die in droves droves you said and i've heard it through other prophets recently droves is like when a whole flock of birds is close by and they all take off at the same time the sound of their wings that is the amount of death coming that is the amount of death because we have idols erected every idol you tore down Dagon's face you tore them down where they were taking place where you are supposed to be in the house of God in individual lives in individual lives the temple the altar these are erected so you will take them down so when I see people and I see football on the screen, I think death is coming to them and those that tied themselves to them are going to find themselves in the same lot that is the weight of the heaviness of the Lord. That is what I'm not seeing. By far and large, in your famous faces that claim to call themselves prophets of the Lord, there is pride rampant in them. There's performances. Performances. God forbid there's performances. You can see it in their looks and their expressions. How they present themselves. They are ridiculing others. They are steamrolling and lambasting others that are in the spirit. Right from the pulpit. Right from the pulpit. They claim God is with me and not you. And you should be silenced right now. And yet you and I yell out and cry out in the middle of these people. Your children... At best, they are wayward with you. And at worst, they're wolves and they're not even part of the family. And we have adopted them into our lives with their words as if they are. Hyper grace. Most people don't want to hear about it. Most people want the pursuit story, which is where we started. They want to hear about, I want to pursue the things of God that I want to pursue. And that's not how you work. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Ask me how I know. Oh, I know, Father. <laughs> I, 
listened. I listened. Did you know I was in cessationism for a very long time? Father, I didn't even believe your word right. I didn't do it. Thank God. Thank God somewhere inside, Jesus, you were still crying out to me and I really wanted to know you. The saving grace you gave me is the desire to really want to know you. And I said, I'll give up everything, including physical life itself, health, prosperity, friends, jobs, titles, anything. I just want to know you. I just want to know. I just want to know you and the truth. The truth about you. Which, funny, you know, the more you jump into that with God, he'll show you things like, well, yeah, I gave you the Holy Spirit, babe, and he is to bring you into all truth about me. But they're not doing this, or they're talking about money and wealth transfers, and are those things accurate? Do you have them, and are you going to provide them? Yes. But, uh, sir, how many people in America are living wickedly? Great number of them, Janet. How many people are going to die soon because of that? A great number of them, Janet. Where's your heart on it, sir? <laughs> Hurting, Janet. How many of your servants, air quotes, how many of your servants are talking about your heart and your mission at this hour? <laughs> or how many of them are talking about their own souls, their own prosperity, and where they would like God to head. Because even if those are well-intended, ignorant children of yours that are speaking of only blessings coming in, they're not warning anybody, Papa, they're not warning anybody. <laughs> and if you have a majority of us that in this nation who are living wickedly, evidenced by everything we see and experience around us. If you have eyes to really see the truth and not blanket yourselves in lies, coddling yourselves spiritually, he's going to remove us soon, soon, any minute. Now he's going to come through and he's going to turn everything around for us soon, 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 soon. Did you know that he's been telling me he's not coming to turn anything around for that person? That person's going to go through hotter fires. He's burning the fires and heating them up hotter because they didn't achieve what they were supposed to. Did you know that his children don't run from a fight? They run to the fight. Did you know that's his spirit? That's what his spirit knows. And if they preach any other Jesus, do you remember him saying, and there is none greater than John the Baptist? This is before indwelling right with Christ. You know what? I know what they forgot about that. We don't have any creepy, crazy John the Baptist out. I am one. P.S. Jesus, I love that about you. You made me a creepy John. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> My name is Janet, which is Jane at its root. And Jane is the female of John. And John is the grace, the gift of the grace of God. It is... <laughs> Five letters that spell my name, and five is the number of grace, and it is what we need. We need to remember who you are, and that you are grace and love, but at a certain point, we cannot forget you are justice and recompense and the judge of all things, and every one in the earth and the fullness thereof, and everything in it is yours, and you will. Do with it what you will. So again, I say, I weep before you today because what you're telling me is not what the majority of the false prophets, and I say false right now, because he's telling me many of them we follow are false because they're not, this is what a false prophet is. They are not speaking the word of the Lord and claiming they are. It's not how accurate they are. You can have demons operating on if, out of you that are telling you what they're about to do, so it takes place. Thereby, fulfilled prophecy isn't meaning that it is from the mouth of the Lord or his prophecy or even was his agenda or work. False prophecy is when the Lord is saying and showing this and thus and the others claim to be with him but are preaching another Jesus and another Jesus' plan and agenda. And I don't want to be one that has to bring this message because I loathe the fact that, that, this, that, that this state of existence exists within us right now, that this is a thing, a thing. 
that we can go and per preach pursuits of wealth and money and ministry and influence and and even deliverance. Did you know that deliverance has become um, a crowd draw? And your prophets and the prophets of Baal are out there and they're going to doodle it out. That's what 2023, 24, 25 and some other years are going to be. Jesus, I see you clapping in the spirit because you're so happy this is coming up. It's going to be a fight. It's a showdown between light and dark. The kingdoms are going to clash. So tell me again how God can use the folks that are just sitting around saying how God is going to change everything soon. Flip it around and rescue us when he's like, yo, I need you guys to be the rescuers. That is what we signed up for. When you got saved, you became a military combatant in my kingdom. Did they not understand this, Janet? I don't think so, Jesus. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. And I'm crying, Jesus, because they're going to perish. They're already perishing and they don't even know it, Janet. So, we can pursue all day long, nonstop prayer sessions and begging and pleading with God to remove his hand of judgment off this nation and it's not going to happen. Because the truth of that, that whole spiel right there, is that those people want their cake and eat it too. They don't want to change. And he's telling me without the reformation process, there's no revival of a nation, Janet, it dies. So... <laughs> I bring to you guys the full circle of this message today because now I know he's going to make me release it and I right now I'm realizing how horrible it must sound with all the crying. But I had to record this just for my own sanity to have a conversation with him. But he's not going to lift his hand of judgment off the nation. The nation. I didn't say his bride. He's going to not lift his judgment off the nation of America. Why? Uh, because... They say one thing, but they do another, and I need them to be reforming inside so that they can say one thing and be consistent and congruent with what they do, and then I can bless a nation and rebuild her. So we're going to tear the establishment down, Janet. I'm crying, Jesus. I tried to let you say it. I know what's coming. And they don't want to believe we are where we are at the bottom. They don't want to believe it. They don't want to believe judgment is coming. Okay. Thank you for reclaiming. You're not going to lift your hand of judgment off the, off the nation of America because the nation of America is not run by the, by the bride right now. I know it isn't. He just said it isn't yet. And it just isn't. It just isn't right now. I know. So he has to tear down the establishment. What does that mean? He has to wreck it down to the to the rubble of the foundation. I don't know. I do. I do. I do. I do. I believe that means physical world too. I didn't want to say it. Do you understand the weight of what I know I'm doing? When I have to say it, he's like, you have to say it. I don't care if it's through tears. Well, you have to say it. It's going to come with physical rubble. I don't know to, to what extent, but I see cities. I don't see like the whole nation blowing up in an atomic bomb everywhere. But I see cities exploding. That's all I know. I see city attacks and cities exploding. Like bombs. <laughs> Burning. Violence. <laughs> and he's not going to remove it because the cup is full. The cup got full. We didn't do anything about it. We didn't clean our own house. The church wasn't living right. Because as goes the church, so goes the nation. When it's Judah or Israel. And Israel is us now. <laughs> Jacob's name, our tribe's name, got changed to Israel. So spiritually, that's all of us that are supposed to be living with God and living right with him. And he said, we didn't do it right. We the, the, the body of Christ failed its testing. We were being tested through all the blessing years. I don't think we realized that. When we were fat calf in the stall, blessed by God, you know. 
70s, 80s, 90s, whatever time period he's talking about. We, we, we've we been blessed for quite some time. We were able to lead wicked lives however we wanted, indulging in whatever we wanted, and it seemed as if nothing was going to happen because of it. That changed. We entered a new time period, a new era with God. And so now we're, 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 we're just, we were sowing. I don't think anybody knew that. We were sowing that whole time. For what? For today's current day har harvest reap so so how how did how did we really live 70s 80s 90s 2000s do you see what i'm saying we are going to reap that now and so if you were living right with god through 70s 80s 90s 2000s etc or got right with him recently even he can do a lot with these people and those are going to be the manifested Romans 8 19 people he walks out with why because he says they got out of the way I was able to clean their vessel and they've got issues and they're still strongholds and demonic crap running in their lives Janet but I've got I have control so I'm gonna keep refining them in ultra refinance because these are going to be my leaders but they are not going to step out their filthy and they are not going to step out there of their own souls and their own volition and their own pursuits and their own ministry it's my ministry it's my words and it's my scripture that I'm fulfilling have we forgotten that I forgot where we were going with that Jesus <laughs> I'm refining people right now and we are going to go through a refining process Janet Yes, I know you can feel the weight in your throat of me speaking. I cannot skip this process. How do you put out lighthouses for everyone else to see if their glass is in and their insides are filthy? Their light has gone dark. I have to clean them up. Which means all these people you're seeing in the public realm that are making mistakes left and right and jumping down people's throats and having demonic outbursts whilst they're my anointed people is because I'm showing what I told you I would, I'm outing everything hidden because what we're doing is welcoming in my era and my time coming in and I cannot lay down my kingdom law when no one is obeying me and no one cares to. So we're going to see the error of our ways first, Janet, and I'm going to wreck the establishment, which doesn't mean the actual physical country entirely. It means all of the roots and bones of how it's been functioning and who's been behind it leading all that. And those people that are hardcore tied into that system are going down, sweetheart, and you need to prepare yourselves right now. Because I have given the leadership in every position, in every Metron influence of Kingdom Mountain business, plenty of time with my mercies. And now I come up with my next move of love, which is judgment. judgment. I'm going to bring in what's been sown and we're going to not only do that, but we're going to reveal it and we're going to dump the purse out, lay our cards down on the table. We're going to see who was with whom, who got a good score and a good grade, who failed their pop quizzes, because every day I'm testing y'all, Janet. Every 24-hour period that you get is for you to decide with whom you're going to serve. And every day you continue to serve me, I advance you, I move you up, I bless you, I give you more wisdom, and I take over your vessel to do more through it, so as I choose, because you are mine. And you said, please, with whatever you do, reform me to be like you, to look like you, to walk like you, to move like you, and to be the good little ambassador child that you have asked to be in the earth. That is what I do with my children. Those children are about to see amazing things right in the darkest of times. Why? Because that's when I need them. That's why I put them here. That's why they're sent here. That's why they're cultivated. That's why they paid the cost. There is a great cost to walk with me. I told everyone that. So you know where they put me, Janet? They left me popped a squat right at the bottom of the cross. And I'm sitting there at the foot of Calvary. And everyone shook my hand, said, nice to meet you. We really love you. They sent praises out of their mouth at me. And then they turned from my way and walked away. Yes, child. So when they want to turn around and get right with me again and come back to that cross and apologize for treating me the way that they have and to take me seriously and allow my Holy Spirit to do the work of his own very commission. Because when you deny him reforming you into my image and you deny him bringing you into truth and a real reconciled relationship with the Father, you have become altogether unprofitable for me and are leading others astray and not fulfilling your work, which makes those that are fulfilling my work have to carry a load like this child speaking to you now, which no one knows of. 
You don't know the extent of her teeth. You don't know what organs I asked her to give up and be worse for later because I took her into a hospital during the middle of COVID so that she could open portals and reestablish a governmental role. Yes, she is an apostolic prophet. And you should tell them this too, Janet. What I'm bringing out now, my manifested ones, the ones that are going to move in the great power and authority with me moving through them, they will be this. You cannot be any other. You will be priestly, which is pure, wholehearted, living honestly in all ways, shapes, and forms with me open, blunt, and bare-chested. You will be priestly, prophetic. Why? Because everyone can prophesy, Janet. It really means, can they hear me clearly? Are they obeying? Are they surrendered? Are they living compromised lies? And are they in pursuit of their own agenda or not? Priestly, prophetic, clear hearing apostles. That's right. Why? Sweetheart, I have got to get my apostles out there who care about reforming each and every individual life, which is re which is tearing down the establishment that was formerly erected on lies and deception and corruption and reestablishing the true foundation, which is the cross, which is the gospel and the good news of me and my entire kingdom. We're going to plant a new kingdom in people. And those are the lighthouses. My apostles are the lighthouses. When you first came to me, Janet, and you said, I'm not sure who I am, Jesus, tell me who I am and what how, what my position is in your kingdom. I told you before you knew anything about apostles and prophets coming out of independent fundamental Baptist religion. I said, you are my Swiss army knife. And you were like, that's cool. Yes, that's because that's an apostle, sweetie. That's what I am. I told everyone I am the apostle and I am the spirit of prophecy. So all can prophesy. All can be as close to Jesus and hear me as they want to. But the priestly was forgotten, my sweet child. The priestly was forgotten. Pure hearted, holy in my way. Black and white was forgotten. Mm, the order of Melchizedek is coming back, child. And we're going to tell them that today. So I am not going to stop my own word of mouth to my apostolic prophetic John that I spoke my book of revelations to and showed him my visions. I will fulfill my own word. <laughs> I am faithful like that. And we're going to go through judgment because the judgment is going to turn up the fire and people are going to bow their knee to me. And they are going to be reformed to my image and live honest lives or they're not coming home to me at all. And I will graduate vehicles which are flesh bodies. I have no problem graduating a vehicle because your true source of 